moving on. Uh, first, you asked me about the speech you since the sale of Philip Coutinho. I just wonder how was the decision, why was the decision reached to sell him at this stage of the season? And also with the speculation even that you could try for someone like Alexis Sanchez, that you're actively looking to replace him in this window with either Sanchez or somebody else. We have one question. Oh, because you put everything in one, yeah, 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 wow. Do you want to start with Alexis Sanchez? <laughs> I don't think you want. Um, so, okay, what was the start of the question about? So, it was about Phil why, Coutinho, why, right? Why and how the decision taken at this stage? Because there was no other option. That's, I would say, it's a pretty easy answer. We had. Um, so if and it's always like this, I don't know exactly how the reaction have been after that, and um, but uh, what if there's somebody maybe who should be angry, massively disappointed, whatever, in this case, then it could be the manager of the club, the players leaving, and I'm not. Because I know we tried absolutely everything. The club tried everything to convince Phil to stay here and, and um, yeah, go the way, carry on going the way together with us, stuff like that. It was... And it's exactly like like um, everybody knows. Meanwhile, it was his dream, and I can. It's the truth when I say he left Liverpool only for one club, and it was Barcelona. And now we have. To, there was a moment when we really have to had to accept that, and that's um, club was fighting until the last second, if you want, for and uh, tried really everything, and um, that's. That's the case, and then it was a moment when I, when I knew I knew when it will come up again in, in this transfer window. It came up massively um, that it will be then very difficult if we say what we could have done. Of course, look, there's your contract, and you have to stay here um, to use him as a player in the second part of the season. So, and that's a decision I have to make then. At one point, is made, does it make sense? Can, do I think I can? Uh, we can use him. Still, he can help us still, and to be honest, it was one of us in clear no chance. He's, he was um, not ready to do that anymore. He did fantastic in the first part of the season after after things we we had after the things we had to deal with in the summer transfer window. He did fantastic in the first part of the season. The team did fantastic because it's never easy. It's so quite you can if you if you are a little bit. Different, and you can talk about this all the time. And um, even Phil did not, not only fantastic games in the first part of the season or fantastic sessions, stuff like that. But it, the, the team did really brilliant with that, with how the whole club did, and Phil as himself. But it was clear that's over now. We cannot do that anymore. And um, so we made that decision. That's it. And in terms of replacing him. Sanchez, as I said, have been linked, but are you looking it's to fit always, him or anyone it's, else? It's, all, it's always, it needs to be, if, if, if we do something, then it needs to be the right decision. So we don't have to replace him in this. We, we have to, what we have to do, and it's, um, we have to step up. If we, we have to, we will have 11 players, eh? so, and we, we won't be played fantastic football without Phil. I, it, I don't want to sound disrespectful because I really liked him. He was five years here. He was here since I was came in. He was always in the dressing rooms. That's how it is. You you miss a person if you won't miss it, and something would have been wrong in the time when, when you were together. That's how it is. I'm sure he was missing us. Maybe he doesn't realize it in the moment <laughs> when everything is new there. But it's that's 100 percent clear. And um, so we only have to 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 carry on. And um, we had. I was had fantastic games with him and not that good games with him. <laughs> um, played good without and not that, that good with him. So that's always, um, we all know that. So that's the situation. We, we are already used to it. It's now pretty much a week ago. And that's how it is. And replacement, that was the question. Uh, if, first of all, we have to replace him internal, and we, but we have um, go with open eyes through this transfer window, you can imagine. But we don't make, we don't, will not make crazy things. So that's how it is. Right before expensive. Last transfer one promised. Um, I just wonder, and it's just a check really, is there any chance that the Kate deal could be brought forward? There's a lot of speculation that it could, that talks have even begun with Leipzig. What's your understanding of the situation there? My understanding is that there's nothing to say about. So that's how it is. So. 
when we had this conversation with, around the, the Phil Coutinho thing, and I said I have nothing to say about it because it was that that's how it is, and I will not start um, doing that now in, a, in a, another transfer thing. So he's a player of Leipzig. That's what I know, and it will be in the summer here. That's what I know as well, and all the rest, nothing to say about. So cancelled about the game. And is, Salah, is Salah fit for Sunday? And I just wonder as well, how would you compare what Salah's doing for Liverpool with what Raheem Sterling's doing for Manchester City this season? Wow. Well, I always want to... You can compare it. And I, I, have to, I watch Mo Salah much more often, even I saw him a few times playing. And he was just doing really well, to be honest. Um, fantastically well, like Sané is doing. Like... De Bruyne and Silva are doing it's like Fernandinho is doing Aguero and Jesus, so and you can go through the whole team. They're obviously not a bad, not a bad season. Eh? So, um, and but if nothing happens in this moment, it yeah, Mo's back. He's um, training completely normal. What's good, and um, so that's uh, that's of course very important for us. Um, yes, and it's a big game, 100%. We played there a few months ago. I, it was for me one of the stranger games in my life. That um, that's, that I really thought, wow, we were really good in the game. Slightly better side, slightly better chances. Open game, both team not fantastically defending, but both on the front foot. Nice game, yeah. And then um, we had the red card, and um, that obviously changed the game. And maybe for Man City the season after that, that was um, they, they didn't. Do too bad before that, but after that, that was like, ah, we are really good. <laughs> so, um, yeah, in a football way, I think we should try to clarify something. It, they play a fantastic season. Well, our season is not too bad, but in, the, in a game like this, you need to show that you can cause them problems, more problems than other teams can do, stuff like that, make, li make their life difficult. And um, try to win. It's Enfield. That's another thing what we should um, show. And um, really looking forward to the game, to be honest. Um, the last time that we spoke in terms of Virgil, I think you'd had a minimal time on the training pitch and you'd, you'd walked through various ways and things of doing things. You've had a bit more time with him now in the sunshine as well. So, what have you managed to do? Now with with Virgil that you haven't had a chance to do previously. Not everything because it's uh, even that is too short. That's why other players have a preseason. So what they are doing. But it, it, I think the Everton game showed already that he's um, uh, should be. Um, it's a doable job to to adapt him to to the rest of the team. It was it was quite impressive. Come on, you have to say that that was a really good game. Um, against Everton, and um, I was not sure before the game, but um, it was easy to say afterwards. I was very sure. Um, just well done, but it, that doesn't mean um, it's not to do too much with the uh, with the City game. City game is a completely different game, eh? um, and um, the the team thinks the team um, tactics should be as tuned as possible, and. Um, I didn't make a decision so far um, if he is um, ready for that. But in the long term, for sure. In the short term, I don't know. But uh, the good thing is, um, all the other three boys are in a really good shape. So that, in this moment, as if nothing happens, nothing else else happens, then I um, should sleep okay. Think about that problem. You're expecting him obviously to be a bit busier, maybe than he was in the last match, I suppose. <laughs> maybe. Uh, hopefully not. Oh, that would be a really good game. The centre halves have not a big job to do. Then we obviously our pressing is nice. Then I, I take that. God, sorry, is, is this about learning who maybe your best yeah. partnerships are, or do, do we all have to understand that it might not be Virgil starts every game with somebody else? It might be that. Dejan and Joel start games and yeah, that's still possible. And Ragnar Klavan, who is in a fantastic shape. Yeah. Um, so. So he's not guaranteed to start every match. I think essentially is what I'm, I'm maybe. Yes, that's not guaranteed, but that's no problem, and he should not. Even Virgil van Dijk should not play um, 60 games a season or stuff like that. No, that will never happen. All good. 
Michael? Jürgen, it's been a good first half of the season for Liverpool. It's been an incredible one for Manchester City. What's it going to take for Liverpool to get near that, that sort of standard? The biggest strength of, of Manchester City is their tactical discipline, to be honest. What they do, they do. And they do it again and do it again and do it again and do it again. That's how it is. Offensive tactics, eh? so, um, plus defensive counter pressing, stuff like that. But when you see they do, what they do, they do fantastic. But it's a good thing is it's not completely unpredictable. So positions are clear. The only problem is they have on each position and a world class player can do the best he can on this position. But it's not like the ball is here, the next second is there, or something like that. So you can defend it, of course, but it's really difficult. So, and, but that's their big strength. And um, obviously, we. On a good day, we um, have a really good level, but we had a few days when we didn't do that with the same um, consistency uh, again and again and again. So tried different things, not, well, not maybe not that convinced about the things, had not the confidence. That's why I said uh, the, until the City game, um, I think we were pretty much level. Um, I don't know exactly anymore, but maybe that a few points more or not, but uh, pretty much. And after that game, we struggled a little bit, and City didn't. <laughs> Obviously, they used the momentum, and we suffered a little bit. So we got five and lost the player and stuff like that early in the season. Uh, we lost Sadio, and Phil was not really in or not fit 100%, plus Ox was not here. so. It was a different situation, but since we found our way, I think it's not that they then made 500 points and be um, minus 70. So, but it's only they, what they do, they do on an incredible high level, and that's really that's really strong. Silva and 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 um, David Silva and Kevin De Bruyne are now having Ilkay Gundogan um, 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 to to give one or the other a rest. That's wow, that's quality, yeah? so, and so and. Obviously, they, they enjoy what they're doing and they have the confidence of what you have when you are 16 points up or so. So that makes them quite um, a nice football team. You touched on it briefly before, but how much optimism or confidence can you take from the game against City early on this season, despite the scoreline? You know, <laughs> you know, Liverpool went toe-to-toe with the best team in the country and were as good as them. Yeah, but it's, it, I said it's long ago. But of course, we we know that's possible. It's all, all must come all together. That's it's only one information what I have, and really I think in sports that's why you play twice against each other. So sometimes you you get the opportunity to put the things right. So um, and yes, that was not a nice day in that season, to be honest. And um, so to try to draw another picture. That, that, that I think that would make really sense. It would be one part of our motivation. But if, if that's the only one, um, then we don't have a chance um, anyway. And um, and that's the that's the that's the thing. Um, it's just a, what can I say? It's 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 just interesting. It's just interesting to play against them. They play really good. And and uh, we, if you don't respect that, I think each team respects it. Then you have a problem. If you are, but if you then are not brave in the things you do, then you have another problem. So you need to you need to really show up in a game like this. Otherwise, if you try to react a little bit on what they do and stuff like this, then you you will lose. That's how it is. Or they sh- shoot own goals, but we sh- maybe should not hope um, for that. Um, and that's the, that's then the only possibility. So really, we need to show up. That's how it is. Sorry to bring back the transfer winter again, but there's been a suggestion today that people <coughs> might consider letting Daniel Sturridge leave in January. What would you, your response be? That's part of the transfer window. So. I will not I have nothing to say about that. Um, so that's that's how it is. So we will see. Until the 31st of January, there are a lot of things can happen in the transfer window. So and probably you will know, especially if it's about other clubs, you will know earlier than I will. Um, but yeah, nothing to say. So we, we will see. Not only with Daniel or whatever. No, we will see with all the things what can happen in the transfer window. I mean, he's back in training. That's uh, healthy and on the way to be fit again.
that's clear. Any others that have been injured at bat? Hendo? Hendo is in this moment out, of, uh, out on, the, on, the, on the pitch and his training looks good. He wears football boots, that's always a good sign. But was not in team training so far. Alberto Moreno was in team training yesterday, the first full session. Yeah. Um, our city is a little bit early, but after that he should be ready. Who else? No. Sorry? Yeah. Saying it's too early from the weekend too early for Alberto. Yeah, if nothing happens, then uh, it should be. Then he needs time to 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 have proper training now. Of course, uh, the boys do meanwhile really a lot in all their rehab, in all the rehab situations. We bring them a little bit. If we have time, we bring them a little bit later in team training that they can um, do a little bit more of the specific physical work. Uh, but then still, it's it's uh, they need time to adapt to the to the intensity of a football game. But looks looks really good. Cool. Hello. Uh, do you think it's possible to make a parallel between now and your Borussia times? You uh, lost some players for Bayern, but you kept fighting for titles. You kept winning titles. Uh, like the message is, it's impossible to research the market natural flow. But you can keep fighting for fighting. I don't know if we can compare it. We lost plenty of player in Dortmund, to be honest. So in that, at the end, maybe we couldn't deal with that that much, that good anymore at the end. But one player was never a problem, to be honest. That we, if somebody wants to know that, I'm not sure if anybody wants to know it. But um, best player, player of the season in 2011 at, in Germany was Nuri Sahin. He left the club. After that season, so to be honest, he was a very, he was not it was not a coincidence that was the best player of the of the season. He played an outstanding season, and um, yeah, the replacement was Ilkay Gundogan, and he needed half a year to make any game for Borussia Dortmund. But it was not that he came in and succeeded immediately. Things like this happen. You never can compare it. But I really, I, as how I said, it's normal in the business. You lose player, we buy a player, you bring players in, and you always need to react. It's all about the, the atmosphere in, in the club. It's all about if now, if there's on Sunday a free kick, for example, from 18 yards and, or 20 yards, and anybody in the stadium is thinking, ah, Phil, that would be quite. I don't have a lot of English words for that, so not too cool, let me say it like this. So what we, and, and the team will not. So maybe the team in the first moment think, OK, oh, not here, so we have to take We will have solutions for that, but that's 100 percent. So don't, if it's all how it is always with the past, use it. Don't suffer uh, because of it. That's, that's how it is. So, and that's what I always did. And I, really, I, how I said, I like Phil. He was a fantastic player, his behavior. And I said to him, after I don't know which game, when we had a little talk on the pitch, I said to him, chapeau, what a character. That's true, but he still wanted to leave. <laughs> That's how it is, and now he's there, and we are still here. And um, there's nothing to compare. It's only to deal with the situation. And um, this club in the past, especially, I think, at a few situations when I, how I understood it from the, from distance, suffered a little bit too much. I said, wow, how can we deal with that? Like Sterling, I don't know. Um, he made another decision and made a decision for another club. Like. Yeah, Suarez, stuff like this. So really, it's a normal, normal thing, and um, and we have only to make the best of it. And that it's easy because we have still fantastic players here. And if we have difficulties, we don't in, in the next few games we don't have them because Phil is not here anymore. We have them because we have difficulties. That's all.